Welcome to Lapis Lazuli Ministries. We hope you are blessed by this teaching. Dr. Tom Jones is the Executive Vice President of Global Awakening. He is also the Director of the Apostolic Network of Global Awakening, ANGA, Dean of Global Awakening Theological Seminary, GATS, and an international speaker. Tom met Randy, the founder of Global Awakening, and in 2005 felt the call of God to lay down the church he was pastoring and become a full-time itinerant minister. He has over 40 years of ministry experience as an educator, church planter, and pastor. In 2009, Tom received his master's in organizational leadership from Regent University. And in 2013, he graduated from United Theological Seminary with his Doctor of Ministry. Dr. Jones carries a healing anointing and passion for the Father's heart. He loves to share his knowledge of healing and also his passion for revival. Tom is married to Brenda and together they have two children and grandchildren. Let's welcome Dr. Tom Jones. Thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, and everybody shouts, Amen. All right, turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 2. The title of this teaching is Removing the Ceiling to Healing. Removing the Ceiling to Healing. I, I love to see people get healed. Uh, that passion in me was actually birthed when I was very young. I still remember, uh, even today, the very first healing that I saw took place. I was about six or seven years old. I was with my grandfather at a camp meeting service. My grandfather was my spiritual hero. He actually was the greatest man of God I've ever met. He was illiterate. He couldn't read or write, but he loved the Lord. He loved God. He was passionate about God. He had an intimate relationship with him that I've, I've recognized in very few people. But he was my spiritual hero, and he took me to this camp meeting service, and four or 5,000 people there, and we were sitting toward the back and on the right-hand side, and down uh, several rows in front of me was a man in a wheelchair. There was this famous evangelist on the stage, and he's preaching an old-fashioned Pentecostal sermon, not like I'm doing right now. He was preaching it. I mean, it was this kind of sermon where you spray it when you say it. I don't know if that makes sense to any of you. But it was that kind of a message. And he's stomping back and forth across the platform, just preaching a good old-fashioned Pentecostal message. Not on healing. I still remember the guy's name. His name was C.R. Spain. I can't remember who I met last week, much less someone from 50 years ago. Sorry, 60 years ago. Okay, maybe 63 years ago. But I still remember his name. It made such an impact on me. And all of a sudden, I saw this man in this wheelchair start rolling down to the front. Not a message on healing. Rolls down to the front. He gets right down in the front. There's this big, huge stage. He puts his hand on the ch uh, chair arm, arms of, uh, uh, arms of the wheelchair, and he stands up and starts walking back and forth, just shouting and rejoicing in the Lord. And all of a sudden, off to my right, this young girl jumps up, young lady, she screams, she screams, runs down to the front, grabs this old man around the neck, and they're jumping up and down. Now, at that moment, the evangelist knows that nobody's listening to him. They're all watching the people jumping up and down, down front. So he decides to stop and find out what's going on. So he stopped and said, tell me what happened. And that man said he had not been out of that wheelchair in like something like seven years. I knew, I knew for me it was a lifetime, but he had not been out of that wheelchair. And he just felt led, that to, it just felt like in his heart that tonight was his night, that was his day. And so when he got down to the front and stood up, that was his daughter in the back. She had not seen her father walk in seven or eight years. And that, I don't know what that did in me. Something clicked. I don't know how to explain it. Um, I, you know, I knew a little bit about the Bible. I was raised in church. I understood that Jesus was real, 
But all of a sudden, seeing that miracle take place, something clicked inside of me that I knew that the, Jesus was real, the gospel was true, and that healing was for today. I saw it with my own eyes, and something clicked inside of me. And since that time, I've had a passion for healing. And I, I have a passion to see you get healed. I, I, don't I, don't, I know what it's like to suffer with pain. I won't tell you my story, but I understand what it's like to suffer with pain. And I don't like to see anybody suffer. And so my passion is for you to receive what you need from Jesus tonight. It's not anything that we can do in the natural, but it's what he can do in the spiritual. And let me, let's, let me read the scripture and then we'll jump right in. I promised you this would be short. It's okay to have a goal. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus and after digging through it, lowered the mat to the, the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Drop down to about verse 11. He said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up and take your mat and go home. There's a lot of things that you could focus on in that passage of Scripture. I've chosen to focus on the healing of the man and the effort of his friends. Remember that this man could not get to Jesus to receive his healing. Now, one of the things I admire about the four friends is they did not give up. You know the story. They went up on the roof and they started removing the roof in order to get their friend to Jesus. They removed the obstacles to get their friend to Jesus. And I have found that sometimes when it comes to healing, there are obstacles that need to be removed so we can get to Jesus. There are sometimes, there are times that there's something separating us from receiving what Jesus has for us. And I'm going to talk about some of those things that keeps us from receiving. Now let me just pause right here. Never use those obstacles as a, an excuse for why you didn't get healed. Jesus can push through any obstacle that you put in his way, and I've seen him do it before. I've seen people healed that did not have any faith, although Jesus heals with faith, and he encourages us to have faith. But there are things that seem to keep us from getting to Jesus. And so I talk in, in the form of, or in the vein that, of removing the ceiling to healing because we might need someone to help us remove and I know there wasn't planks in those days. There weren't planks. But I talk about removing the planks on the, on the ceiling so that you can get to Jesus. And I'm going to run through about four or five of these. I'm not going to take long to do it. The first one is very simple. It's having unhealthy attitudes. I guess if I was really blunt, I would say having sinful attitudes like bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. Those can be things that hinder your rece receiving what you need to from the Lord. I've actually prayed with people who had unforgiveness. I'd be, we do a five-step prayer model where we're ministering to them and listening to the Lord at the same time. I've had people that I've been ministering to, and the Lord would prompt me to ask them, do they need to forgive someone? And I've asked them, is there anyone that you need to forgive? And they would say yes, and we would talk about it. And then I would ask them, are you willing to forgive that person in order to receive your healing? I've had people tell me, no, they're not willing. They would rather keep their sickness, they'd rather keep their pain, they would rather keep their disease than forgive that person that they had an offense against. So one of the things that can be a ceiling to your healing is sinful attitudes. Another thing, very simple, is... Uh, a, let me see if I can put this in the right words, an image of yourself that won't allow you to receive your healing. For example, some of the most difficult people I've had to pray for are people who feel like they deserve their condition. 
You ever prayed for someone like that? For example, they've had a lifestyle of sin, and their sickness, their disease, their illness is a result of a sinful lifestyle, and they feel as if they, they, don't, they don't deserve healing because it's their fault. I had one girl in Goyanya a number of years ago. We were doing a, a crusade there, 20,000 people or so, and uh, she was working with me as my translator, and we were praying for people and ministering to people, and people were getting healed. And she whispered to me, she said, I've got something I need you to pray for me about. But she said, I'll tell you later. I knew immediately what the problem was. The Lord spoke to me what the problem was. So we finished praying and ministering during the day. And uh, that night, she pulled me aside and she said, I've been a believer. I've been a committed Christian. She said, but I went through a period of about six months where I fell away from the Lord and I had an affair with a man. And I ended up catching a sexually transmitted disease. She said, I've repented. I've confessed it. I've been restored. My pastors know about it. They've worked with me. She said, I'm okay with the Lord right now. She said, but I can't get healed of this problem. And I asked her, I said, are you feeling guilty over this? Do you feel like the Lord is holding this against you? And she said, yes. So I prayed with her a a prayer of forgiving herself, worked with her for a little bit of time, prayed with her, ministered to her. And within two weeks, I got an email from her saying she was totally healed. She had been to the doctor and been totally healed. She went from having this disease to repenting again and confessing and, and forgiving herself and she was able to receive. So sometimes people have an image of themselves where they feel like they deserve their sickness and they they have trouble receiving. So that's number two. Number three is difficulty in believing that God will heal you now. There are four general attitudes about healing. One is that God doesn't heal. That's not an issue here. We believe God heals. Amen? Okay. We believe God heals. Amen? All right. No problem. The other one is that God heals, but he doesn't heal me. He won't heal me. He'll, uh, he'll heal others, but he won't heal me. That's a second attitude. A third attitude is that God will heal me, but just not tonight, not today. He's going to heal me at some point in the future. A fourth attitude is that God will heal me, and he's going to do it tonight. And that's the place that I want us to reach tonight, is that, yes, Jesus heals, and he's not going to do it tomorrow. He's not going to do it next week. He's going to do it tonight. It is God's will to heal. It is God's will to heal you. See, one of the things that we struggle with is a misunderstanding of the nature of God. I talked a little bit yesterday about the, one of the greatest revelations in the Scripture for me is the fact that we can call God Abba Father. He is our Heavenly Father, and He is a good Father. Do you understand? He's not mad at you. He's not a mean Father. He loves you. He did not make you sick. He did not discipline you by giving you a disease. I've had people tell me that they felt that their sickness was because they disappointed God or some version of that. He is not disciplining you. He did not make you sick. If we, if some people's view of God would get them arrested for child abuse if they were in America as an earthly father. He's not mad at you. He's not angry at you. He is a good God, and he wants to heal you. He wants to heal you tonight. Then the question comes up, why doesn't he? Well, I have the answer to that. I have the answer. Because that's invariably the question that comes to our mind. If God wants to heal me, then why does he not heal me? I have the answer. I don't know. I have no trouble looking at you and tell you I don't understand all there is about the healing ministry. 
There are times that I feel like I know less now than when I first started. I do know that he's a good God, he's a loving God, he's a loving Father, and that he wants to heal us. I don't understand. I'm giving you some reasons, but I don't totally understand why everybody's not healed immediately. One of the things the Lord taught me early in ministry, in the healing ministry, I'd gone to a Wimber conference in the early 80s and got really touched and got excited about healing, praying for the sick, and uh, came back to my church and implemented a healing ministry. And we were seeing people get healed right and left. I mean, just one right after another, they were getting healed. And we were so excited. We were seeing all kinds of miracles. And this, this fresh idea. See, I, I had a theology for healing, but I didn't have a practice. And all of a sudden, I was practicing my theology. And so we were seeing all these people get healed. And we were excited. And then we had one of our young families. They were very young. They had a little girl about four or five years old. And she got pregnant and was expecting a little boy, their son. And about eight months into the pregnancy, they discovered that she was filled with uterine cancer. She was filled with cancer. This may sound a little arrogant, but I had no doubt that that woman was going to get healed. I just believed it. I thought it. I, I had teams going over praying for her. Hours every day, they were praying, and they were praying, and they were praying. We were believing God, and we were trusting God, and we were all excited about the what we believe was going to be a testimony to our community about God's healing power, and that girl gave birth to that boy, and then within a matter of a few weeks, died. It broke my heart. I mean, it broke my heart. My prayer partner, the guy that I prayed most for with when I was praying for the sick, he just, he turned and looked at me and said, this is too hard. I don't want to do it anymore. And I, I had the same feeling. I got so discouraged. Lord, why did you not heal this person? I thought I had faith. I thought you were going to heal this person. And this went on for three or four weeks, this, this inner turmoil about why didn't God heal this girl? Such a precious girl. I remember at the funeral, I was on my knees before her. She was a little blonde-haired girl, and she's looking at me crying. Why did Jesus take my mommy? Why did Jesus take my mommy? And I didn't have an answer for her. All I did is look at her and say, I don't know, sweetheart. I don't know. I don't know. And about four, months, four, about four weeks into this process, I'd gone through McDonald's to get a cup of coffee. And it was back when McDonald's coffee, if you're from America, you know what I'm saying, it was back when coffee was really hot before the lawsuit, and they made the coffee a lot. It wasn't as hot, but it was back then it was really hot. This was in the 80s, and I'm driving to my office, and as I'm driving down the road, a car pulls over in front of me, and I swerve to miss the car, and I spill the coffee on my hand. I spill it on my leg, and it began to burn. It turned red immediately. It was beginning to blister, and so... I'm just, you know, trying to get it cool off. And all of a sudden, this inward audible voice speaks to me and says, pray for your hand, declare healing over your hand. Now, I had the audacity to argue with the voice. Anybody else ever argued with the voice? I argued with the voice. And I said, God, it doesn't work. I mean, when I think about it now, I think, how silly. I'm telling God it doesn't work. Lord, it doesn't work. It's just not like I thought it was going to be. And the Lord just lovingly kept saying, pray for your hand, speak healing to your hand, declare that it is healed. So just in a moment of desperation, actually to get him to leave me alone, I just say, hand and leg be healed in the name of Jesus. And instantly, and instantly, the pain left, the, re the redness left, the blistering left, I was immediately healed without any hesitation at all, which was neat. But then the Lord very clearly spoke to me and said, you do what I've called you to do and you leave the rest up to me. And from that time forward, I've tried to do what I'm supposed to do and leave the rest up to him. I don't know why every person get, doesn't get healed. I don't have all the answers. I'm giving you some reasons, some obstacles, some things that hinder healing. But I don't, I don't, there are just things that I to me, the, the healing ministry at one level is a mystery. I just know that for me, I'm going to lay my hands on every person I can lay my hands on and leave the rest up to him. And I'm going to try. I'm never going to take credit if they get healed. And I'm going to try not to beat myself up if they don't get healed. I'm not always successful.
with that part. I was in Brazil a few months ago and I was praying for this little boy. And he was, he was probably two or three years old. His parents were weeping and crying and he was in a desperate situation with some kind of a deformity and, and uh, was not very coherent. And my heart just went out to them. I just, I wanted to, I just, I just prayed, oh God, let this be the one, let this be the one, let this be the one. And it got behind my shield. I, I got, I thought, Lord, why not this one? But I've had to try to the best of my ability to do what I'm supposed to do and leave the rest up to him. All right, back to my original point. What we want, where we want to get to tonight is believing that God is going to heal you tonight. I think that the Lord has answered that question. And I'll read another verse to you in make note of it. You can read it later if you want. Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 42. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees. If you are willing, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man, and he said, I am willing. You see, the man didn't doubt whether Jesus had the power or the authority to heal him. To heal him. His question was, are you willing? And I'm saying, I believe the Lord is willing to heal tonight. Amen. I believe he's willing to heal you tonight. I'm trying to make a decision whether to spend some time on faith here. Um, faith is one of the things that, you know, remember when Jesus went into Nazareth and he said he couldn't perform many miracles there because of a lack of faith? Faith is a factor in healing. It really is. Um, see, we can believe that Jesus heals today. We can have faith that he heals because of what he said in the Old Testament. Let me I'm going to go ahead and read this to you anyway. What he said in the Old Testament. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. By his wounds we are healed. We can believe that Jesus heals because of what he did according to the Old Testament. What about the New Testament? Matthew 8, 16 through 17. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. And this is what the Scripture says. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. So there is more in the atonement than just eternal life. There is provision for our healing. There is provision for our... our uh, for us to have health. Yes, uh, the atonement was for eternal life. There, there's an old story that about an Irish, young Irishman that wanted to immigrate to America. And he saved up all the money he could and he bought a, a ticket to America. He got on the ship. He didn't have enough money for the food, so he bought a bag of cheese and bread. And he got on the ship and as, he was, as they were sailing across, one day the captain of the ship saw him off eating this stale bread and stale cheese and asked him, young man, why are you not in the galley eating with the rest of the, the, those, the, the passengers? And he said, well, sir, I had only enough food. I had enough money to buy the ticket. I did not have enough money to buy the food. And the captain looked at him and said, didn't you know that the price of the food was included with the ticket. See, we sometimes forget that the price of our healing was taking place at the atonement. It's a part of the ticket. It belongs to us. It's up to us to reap out, reach out and appropriate it. It's the atonement. It's the work that Jesus did on the cross. I think, sometimes I think we've minimized the importance of the cross in today's church. The work of the cross is so important. What Jesus did is took care of our sins. He took care of our health. There was a lot of things at the cross that, as I mentioned yesterday, we've not appropriated yet. So, 
Faith is one of the things that we may have to work through in order to receive our healing. And then lastly, this is going to be the last point I'll make tonight. A lack of persistence is another factor that I think determines our healing. Um, we give up too quickly. I was in Goiânia. No, I was, I was in Curitiba, Brazil, a number of years ago, and I had a girl that came up to me. She had a tumor on her finger, and she was scheduled for surgery the next week. I prayed for her on Thursday night. Prayed, where, prayed for her for quite a while. She didn't get healed. She came up to me on Friday night. I prayed for her again for this tumor, rather aggressively. She didn't get healed. She came up Saturday night. This is the third night in a row. And I'm thinking, lady, why don't you go to somebody else? Nothing is happening when I'm praying. So I pray for her on Saturday night. Pray for her. Nothing happens. The last night is Sunday night. We leave Monday. So Sunday night, she comes to me the last night, fourth night in a row. I pray for her, and guess what happens? Nothing. She did not get healed. I go back to that church about six months later, and Brandy and I was, were there with the team, and I saw her. I was down front at the, at the stage, and I saw her coming. She had the youth pastor by the hand. She walked over and said, I've got to tell you what happened. She said, I got up on Monday morning. I looked down at my finger, and the tumor was gone. It disappeared in the night. She was persistent. I don't think it was as a result of my faith. I think it was a result of her faith. She was persistent. She was so thankful. Listen to what she did. She was so thankful. She gave the money, all the money she was going to give the surgeon, she gave it to the church. I mean, that was one thankful girl. But she was persistent. She did not give up. We had a situation in Goiânia where we were there with a team this has been a number of years ago, probably in 2003 or 2004. I forget now. And um, we were there and ministering a very large church, several thousand people. We left the next day to go to another city and bring in another team. Well, after we leave Goiânia, we're at this other city, and this pastor from Goiânia calls us, calls Randy. And he says, you're not going to believe what happened. He said, some girl, some blonde-headed woman on your team prayed for a member of mine who was blind, totally blind. He had his eyes burned out with acid, been blind for years, could not see. She prayed for him like for five hours. I think it was three, but Randy says five. So five hours, prayed for him. That was the only person she prayed for all night. Said he got up on Monday morning, nothing happened. Got up on Tuesday morning, nothing happened. He got up the third day. When he opened his eyes, he could see normally. And the pastor said he's down at the doctor's office right now. They're trying to figure out why he can see. Because he went from being blind to being able to see. She did not give up. Persistence, you don't give up. The greatest illustration of persistence I've ever seen. See, the, the, the man's paralytic's friends didn't give up. They did what it took to get him to Jesus. And sometimes we need to do that with people. We need to do whatever it takes to get them to Jesus so that Jesus can heal them. We need to remove every obstacle, every hindrance, and get them to Jesus. The greatest illustration I think I've ever seen of um, persistence took place in Mozambique. Uh, one of our associates, of that, well, he was working for Heidi, but he's an associate of ours as well, Will Hart a crusade, an event out in the bush, way out in the bush bush. And it was a small building, but there was like five or 600 people there. It was a small little building. They all sit on the floor really close. And so we did this event. And then the last night, Heidi Baker, a missionary to Mozambique, and Randy Clark came to close out the event. And so we were doing ministry. Randy had already spoken, and, and the ministry team was down front like they're going to do tonight. And they were praying for people. And I'm just sort of walking back and forth on the stage, looking to see what's going on, making sure the team's following the guidelines. And all of a sudden in the back, I saw a woman come in with a little baby boy in her arms. And Heidi had her ministry school there. 
And so she walked in. She handed the baby to the ministry school students. Now, I don't know what's wrong with the baby. I just it happened to catch my eye, which I'm thankful it did. So they spent about 15 minutes praying for this baby, just walking back and forth, aggressively praying. Nothing happened. They took that baby. They handed it back to the mother. The mother turned, walked down the side of the building, walked up on the stage, a little small stage. Randy's off in the corner over here, and he's got his group of people he's praying for. She just walks in and hands Randy the baby. It didn't have any bottoms on. It was filthy. So I went over to find out what was going on. So I walked over, found out the baby born blind had no pupils. His eyes were an off-white. He was 18 months old, I think, and he was born blind. So Randy spent some time praying for him, and I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, nothing happened. Give the baby back to the mother. The mother turns and walks to where Heidi's sitting. Heidi is sitting in a chair, just resting in a folding chair. She walks over and hands Heidi the baby. Now, Heidi, if you know her, she's very loving. She started kissing and hugging on the baby. And then she did, some, then she did something very strange. She took a handkerchief, a piece of cloth, and she poured water on the cloth. We asked her later, why did you do this? She said, that's what the Lord said do. So she took this cloth, and she started washing the baby's eyes, washing his face and washing his eyes. Now, what, would, what will an 18-month-old baby do when you start trying to wash his face? He closed his eyes, and he started screaming, just, just screaming. And so Heidi finishes wiping his face off. He's got his eyes closed, and he's screaming. She stands up. She puts him down on the floor. He's holding on to both of her fingers with his feet on the floor. When he opens his eyes, he's got the most beautiful, normal pair of eyes you've ever seen in your life. And I think we have a photograph of that baby. If they can put the blind boy photograph up, we'll see him. He went from no pupils, no eyes, to having a brand new set of eyes. Now, there was a, a woman who worked in an optometrist's office there, and she came up and said, Heidi, it's not that I don't believe. She said, can I test the baby's eyes? I'm thinking, lady, he's just got new eyes. The Lord's not going to send him a pair of faulty eyes. But Heidi says, yes, check him out. So she takes her light, shines it, and I'm there watching. By now, everybody in the whole building's up watching what's going on. Shined his light, and where the light went, the eyes followed, and she looked at Heidi and said, Heidi, the baby can see. <laughs> baby boy blind from birth, brand new eyes. A few minutes, well, uh, several minutes before then, he, didn't, he had off-white eyes. Went from totally blind, 18 months old, to now he can see. What I love about that photograph is I love the look on the mother's face as she's looking at the baby. I get teary when I see it every time, just realizing the joy that she's experiencing. And so Heidi and Randy and I are leaning on the pulpit, and I don't think Heidi knew how bad the baby was. And so we're just leaning, talking about the miracle. And Heidi calls the pastor over. She said, now, did you tell me the baby was born blind? He's 18 months old. The pastor said, yes. She says, go check with the mother and make sure. So he goes, talks to the mother right, right there comes back and says, yes, the mother said he's born blind, had no pupils, and was, was 18 months old. We talk a few more minutes, and Heidi looks at the pastor and says, did you ask the mother what I told you to ask her? He says, yes. She says, go back and make sure. I don't want to claim something happened that didn't happen. So she goes and talks to, he goes and talks to the mother. And this time, I see the mother's getting a little bit agitated. He comes back and says, um, yes, the mother, she's getting upset. She said the baby was born blind. He's 18 months old, and he couldn't stand either. He not only got his eyesight, he got his ability to stand. And I, I, was, just, I was just so amazed at what I saw, and I'm just, I'm just walking around. I'm weeping, I'm crying, and I'm just saying, Lord, I want to see more of those kinds of things happen. What was the difference there? What, what, why her? And very clearly... The Lord spoke to my heart, and he said, she didn't come to get prayer for her baby. She come to get her baby healed. Let me say that again. I don't think you saw the difference there. He said, she didn't come to get prayer for her baby. 
She came to get her baby healed. And too many times we come to get prayer for healing rather than come and get healed. She was determined she was going to get her baby healed. I think if she hadn't got healed with Heidi, she'd have come to me next. She was going to go to everybody she could find until she got her baby healed. The Lord said she didn't come to get prayer. She came to get her baby healed. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm encouraging you tonight. Don't come to get prayer. I don't care how many times you've been prayed for. I don't care who you've been prayed for. I don't care who's prayed for you. I want you to come tonight. When we call for you to come forward, I want you to come to get healed, not get prayer. Come expecting, believing that tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for your encouragement. Lord, I sent you healing anointing here already. And Lord, we're believing that people are going to be healed. There are going to be miracles. There are going to be people set free from things they've had for years. Things, Lord, that they've decided is just a part of their life. They're never going to get better. Lord, tonight is their night. I believe it. Tonight is their night, Lord. Tonight is their night. You're going to set them free. Thank you, Father. One of the things that we do is we show videos to build faith. And I found a couple of videos that I think might apply here. And what I want you to do is I want you to watch the videos. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I want you to watch the videos and you're going to see different conditions healed. If you see something you have, get healed. He did it for them. He can do it for me. That healing is mine tonight. And when, so you can get healed during the video. We've had thousands of people get healed even before prayer by just watching a video. So I want you to watch the video. Expect to be healed of whatever they declare. And then at the end, we'll pray if you haven't been healed. So let's watch the first video. So awesome. I had problem with my ears. My ears is always ringing. Sometimes I have to hold this right ear. I'll be shouting Jesus, Jesus for years. But when the prayer was going on, in fact, I was even putting my finger because something was coming out like oil or water or whatsoever. I was putting my finger to see if I can see something liquid, but I couldn't see. And I had problem with my eye. For over seven years, I even have a glasses in the house that my husband told me that, my wife, you are not going to use glasses, but I kept it. So I even, I wouldn't have come for this program because of the way I was feeling the pains. I can't look at light directly. Tears, if I read just for a moment, you see tears all over, but right now, my eyes, my right eyes, it is clearer than ever before. Oh, Jesus, I'm grateful. Thank Jesus, you. I'm grateful. Lord Jesus. So you can look at light now, and it Very doesn't well, cause you problem. Very well. Sir. And the right ear had ringing. Clear. And it's clear. Did it happen when someone prayed for you, or was it the word of knowledge? Yes, it was when the prayers was going on, sir. And you were standing in the back? Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Jesus, for the healing of the ear and the eye. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for her excitement. We bless her, Lord, as she goes. And, Lord, we're thankful that she won't have to use her glasses any longer, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I was blind in both eyes. Mm -hmm. The left eye completely. All I can see is light. But the right eye, my vision start to improve. As, as the years go by, this started in 2010. So far, my right eye has improved greatly in that when I came in here tonight, I was able to see the faces on the uh, platform, which Thank I was you, not Jesus. able to do. I wasn't even seeing the face of my pastor very well when I go to church. And I was much closer than tonight. 
But you could see the faces on the stage tonight. Yes. And it becomes clearer, clearer as he, um, Mr. Thomas, Pastor Thomas speaking. So you couldn't read. Well, I can't read I that can't either. Read that. But you can now read this sprint here? Yes, sure, I can. About the time the disciple came to Jesus and asked, who is, the, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And it happened when you were, during the prayer time when you stood up, was it a word of knowledge or the video? The word of knowledge. Word of knowledge. I want to show the, this Bible, if you can get, I can't read that. And you were unable to read it, and then the Lord touched your eyes, and you can now read it. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh my God, the pain is gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to have a sharp pain under my foot before, but after the word of knowledge, and I was prayed for, and the pain disappeared. Now, did you feel anything? No, uh, did you feel heat or tingling, or it just disappeared? Dis just disappeared after the prayer. Thank you, Jesus. There was a word of knowledge that was given for the exactly. heel, the feet, exactly. and now it's gone. Yes. Amen. We thank you, Jesus, for this healing. And just stomp again. We want to put that on video. Yes. No pain. No pain. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We give you praise. So you, uh, from, a, when from a woman being healed on the video, you called your mother and you started telling her to do what she couldn't do. And so now she's healed. She's healed. She had not been able to walk properly. Um, a lot of times she has to limp. After much walk, she's going to rest for a long time before walking again. So I said, okay, distance is not a barrier like you thought. I decided to call her. I said, okay begin to do what you couldn't do before i prayed for you and i'm under the influence of the holy ghost and i'm sure that there is power available and she she started doing that i was like no you're not doing it why are you doing it like you're scared i said do it like you're not scared someone just got healed with iron in the leg and she was like okay i'm trying and she, she started screaming on the phone she's healed she's fine there is excitement in my my dad my dad had been he had been trying to read me his they're just so excited. Thank oh, you. I walked in, in, in into this meeting. I had pains in my leg. I woke up last week and I didn't know what happened. I didn't know if I slept the wrong way or, or either. I had pains in my leg and in my chest. That is all gone now. I had pain in my back. When you were mentioning sharp pain, there were certain things I couldn't do when it comes to my back. Sometimes I have to, um, I, I was carrying something like when, when I was younger and I fell off with it and it was like I had um, a, 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 a pain in my back and um, something happened there I can't explain so for a long time anytime I try to twist a little I have pains there so it's gone <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> and, and you couldn't do that before without there being pain I couldn't do that I they were there was always going to be pain but I'm fine I don't know what to say what have I done to deserve this oh. thank you Jesus Lord we thank you for the mercy of uh, for your mercy and healing the mom at home and healing the son here Lord of a number of different pains and problems from the fall and so we give you glory for it tonight thank you father in jesus name amen, amen. thank amen. you so much pastor. oh bless you he lost he's uh hearing 100 percent in both ears the only way he could hear a little bit was with the hearing aids. who with the hearing aids but she he said i said but did you recoup how, how much percent he said I think everything because it's been such a long time that I don't hear, but I think it's everything because I'm here talking to you. I have no hear aids and I'm listening to you perfectly. <laughs> Three years ago, he lost most of it. And the doctor said, my case is irreversible. There is no way to heal this. But I believe in Jesus Christ. I didn't. I didn't believe in what they said. I believe that He would do this miracle for me one time or another. 
because I know his time is not my time, but I believe tonight. I'm ta he said, Can you, do you realize this? I'm talking to you both, and I'm not wearing the hearing aids. And did he feel anything, or did he just all of a sudden his ear? Voltando. Eu tô voltando pro planeta Terra, porque He's, eu ainda tô longe. He said I couldn't I can't explain you because it's like I I I went out. I I went somewhere else and then I still come back. I'm still coming back, so I can't really explain what happened, but I I'm I'm still digesting what happened. So this baby uh, had a big tumor here. Mike uh, how much larger would you say it was? Because I wasn't there. You saw it. It was at least, six, it was at least sixty to seventy percent larger than than what it was. Yeah. She's saying it's eighty percent uh, smaller. Yeah. And then you prayed. How did you pray? I just began declaring in the name of Jesus for the tumor to dry up and die. And right before your eyes? Right before my eyes, I could feel it go underneath my hand, wow. feel it shrink. Wow, wow, wow. And she said she's feeling heat, yes. the baby's hot, she's trembling, feeling the presence of God, and the tumor is almost gone. She said only 20%, but we're declaring 100% Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Are you getting this? We have Rosanna here. After 20 years, she lost 20 years ago she lost this eye. And Jesus is she, you can see a scar here, a scar there. She totally lost it. It was just scar tissue. And and now Abre bem grande assim, Rosana. Isso. You can see the pupil being formed in the back of the white. And the, and the color, it was really white before, but now you can see the color forming. The, the pupil has been formed, the new one. <laughs> Hallelujah. And she's, and, and the, uh, the eye was much smaller. Sun, it, I was very small. Yeah. It wasn't for, it was sunk way back in the back. And she had a, a, a glass eye over it to make Cadê it stick out, look you normal. She had this. She had this instead of an eye there. Yeah. And now? He do, she doesn't need it. See, this is this was in the socket. How how far back it went? It was way back, and this was covering it. Yeah. And now look at that. Wow. I mean, that. Oh, wow. Rosane, Jesus está fazendo um milagre. This woman has from the knee down to here a bar and twelve screws. She has to walk of crutches all the time. She. Hey, ready? She couldn't bend her. She could not bend her knee when she came here. Bending me. I'm not doing this. Something's bending her and she's not doing it. It's like there's a power bending her like this. And she could not bend that knee. Three, Three years months. ago and in five months, she's not been able to walk without crutches, not been able to bend her knee. Like, I feel like it's a bone growing here or something. It's burning. It's hurting. It's weird. She said, help me, please. <laughs> She said I couldn't bend my knees. It's been three years. I never I wasn't able to do this. Are you guys are you guys really understanding what's happening? I couldn't bend my knees. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's hurting, but it's a good hurt. She said it's a good hurting. I knew today wasn't gonna be my day. She couldn't walk without crutches. She couldn't bend her knee. I don't know how to run anymore. I want to run. I want to run. I want to run. <laughs> Woohoo! Jesus! Woohoo! <laughs> I'm so full of joy. I'm so full of joy. I was afraid to run because I could I couldn't run after the surgery I had. I know today wasn't gonna be my day. I couldn't do this. She said, the, you, you don't get it. The doctor said, you're not going to be healed. You're going to have to amputate your leg if you still, if the nothing changes. I couldn't stand on, on the other leg because I had no strength on this one. I could never do this. Now I can, now I can, praise Jesus!
Never crutches, never more. I'm going home without crutches. Amen. When we first started praying, it's like instantly, within five seconds, power hits her leg. And her leg starts shaking like that. And I said to Danny, go get John. Go get John. This is about to happen. I want him to catch this one. It was amazing. And you just saw all that she could do. And she's so excited. And she's going to walk home tonight without crutches. Abuja, he will do here tonight. Now it's our time to participate. What I found is that we have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. We engage. It's, it's one thing to sit back and just say, okay, Lord, give it your best shot. It's another thing to engage with faith. It's another thing to reach out and say, I'm going to take it. Tonight is my night. You heard that on the, on the video a couple of times, that I thought tonight was my night. And tonight is your night. Now, Jesus told the blind man what? To go wash in the pool of Siloam. It was an act of faith on his part. And this is your act of faith. Well, you're about to participate. I can't tell you to go wash in the pool of Siloam. But right now, this is your act of faith. And that is to stand up. If there was anything on the video that you had, anything on the video, and you want to be healed of it, I'm going to ask you to stand very quickly. Go ahead and stand. Anything on the video. Failed surgeries, eye problems, ear problems, ankle problems, joint problems. Go ahead and stand. This is your time to press in. Now, what I want you to do before I pray is I want you to try to test it out. The way the guy saw, he was able to read his Bible is he tried to read without his glasses. So take a moment and, and this is important. It's very important. It is your act of faith. Try to do something you couldn't do. Now, we're going we're gonna to pray for a lot of things in here in just a moment, but right now we're going to focus on the video. So try to do something you can't do. Try to read. Test your, earring, test your hearing. If you had a failed surgery in particular, I want to make sure you get in on this prayer. <laughs> 